This is part three of an introductory course to the Arduino based upon the Eligu Most Complete Starter Kit. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, then please check the link at the top of the screen to the playlist. In this video, we're going to be covering lessons five, six, and seven, which cover the digital inputs and both the active and passive buzzers. Now, moving right along from the kit, select the components that we're going to need. This simple example, you just have two push buttons, one that switches the LED on and the other which switches it off. Switches really don't need very much explanation. Just be aware that the switches will only fit on the breadboard one way round. The legs are spaced slightly broader to fit across the breadboard and we'll see that when we look at the breadboard layout. Clearly, once the button is pressed, it makes a connection between the A, B and the C and D terminals. The schematic is very simple. The two switches are connected to their respective inputs. The output here on D5 is going via a 220 ohm resistor to the LED, the red LED in this case. This is how it will look. Let's go on and build that. The breadboard layout is quite straightforward. If we press the left hand button, our LED turns on and the right hand button and the LED turns off. Very simple indeed. Let's take a quick look at the sketch to see how that's done. Here in the sketch, first of all, the pins are defined. LED pin on output five and the button inputs on nine and eight. And we have a variable here the LEDs to start with it off. The setup, which only runs once, just defines the pin modes. So the LED pin is obviously an output and the button pins A and B are inputs which are, are pulled up in, internally. The loop function, which runs continuously, is reading the values from the A or the B pins and then writing the respective LED pin either high to switch it on or low to switch it off, as we saw with the right hand button, it switches the LED on. Clearly, the other button switches it off. Very simple indeed. Moving on to look at the buzzers. The first lesson six is the active buzzer. This is the active buzzer that you can see with the little seal on top. And the passive buzzer you can tell by the little green circuit board. Now these buzzers are used in a whole variety of uh, electrical and electronic equipment as you can read in the lesson description. These use the piezoelectric effect, which was discovered by Pierre Curie and his elder brother. Uh, Pierre Curie being obviously the husband of the famous Marie Curie, who discovered uh, the first radioactive element. You can see when you look at the schematic here that the buzzer is represented by this symbol, which is in fact a similar symbol to that which is used for any piezoelectric crystal. When you get crystal oscillator circuits, you will see a very similar symbol there. All we have to do is to connect the active buzzer across pins 12 and ground of the Arduino. The positive is indicated by the tab here, and if that happens to come off, it's also indicated on the body of the component. I've already uploaded the necessary sketch for this lesson, so let's plug it in. You may just be able to hear it at the moment. The reason is that this cover effectively blocks the sound, which in some respects is a good idea. Because the sound... The sound is completely awful. It would certainly get your attention. Similar modules are used on quadcopters to locate them if they go down into the, into the long grass. I think uh, that would be particularly, particularly effective. So what is it doing? The pin for the buzzer is defined on pin 12, and then in the setup, which only runs once, the pin mode, the buzzer is obviously an output. In the loop, it outputs a frequency. I'm not sure what frequency it is, just an annoying frequency. And then it waits for a short delay, one millisecond. So it's switching it on and off. That's followed by a different frequency. You could, you could hear the, the, the dual tone, you know, like a police siren, high and low, as it switched between the two frequencies. Moving on to the passive buzzer now. Passive buzzer 
can generate many different tones. In this particular example, it's following the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Si, Do. Do not be concerned, I'm not about to break into song. Attaching the buzzer is simple as before. It explains here that it's using the PWM that we, we saw before that was controlling the brightness of the LED. In this example, the pulse is being used to make the buzzer vibrate at a specific frequency. No surprise in the schematic. What is a surprise though is in the sketch. Although this is a very simple example, it does introduce a very important concept that is the includes that we can see here in the sketch. So the include is including a file called pitches. As explained in the first lesson when the Arduino IDE was installed, we have the concept of libraries. These are specific functions that you may need. For example, in one of my projects where I was using a thermal imaging module, I had to include the libraries associated with that module. In this case, we have to include this pitches, which is the code that generates the individual pitches as described here. If we don't include, when we go to upload or to verify the sketch, there will be an error. Just so that you know what that error is going to look like, you see it. Let's just verify the sketch without including that library. Clearly it's identified by this pink line and an error message saying that no such file or directory exists. Clearly we need to tell the Arduino IDE where that file is. To do that we go up to the sketch tab, include library, add a zip library. Here we are in the Eligoo directory, we can see the library's folder. Within that, we can see pitches.zip. Once again, Eligu have helped us by putting everything in one location. Let's highlight that and open it. Nothing appears to have happened, but now if we go into Sketch and look at the libraries, now we can see in the contributed libraries that Pitches now exists. We should be able to recompile and upload our code. Let me just plug in the Arduino. We'll go back to upload, which will verify and upload, obviously. So there, clearly, it is working. Note that for some functions and libraries, you may need to restart the Arduino IDE, but in this case, it's picked it up uh, immediately. As we could hear, it goes through the individual notes. The setup does nothing in this particular instance. The loop function simply goes through each of the notes in turn and then restarts after two seconds. As promised, I'm not going to sing, but let's let the Arduino play us out.